Music Forex with Deontay, and I'm back with another video. Welcome to Forex Fridays. We have a lot to talk about, but overall, I want to say thank you for supporting me in the channel. Shout out to everybody that's in the Telegram channel that follows me on TradingView, Instagram, Twitter. Even though I'm not highly active on social media, thank you for the ones that are out there sharing the content, spreading the word, and getting out to traders and seeing the results and testimonials of people using these models and it actually granting them consistency or finding a new way to incorporate into their trading model. With that being said, tonight in this lesson, we're going to talk about the London session model, the New York session model, how to utilize the Asian session high or low when bullish or bearish in the most simplest way possible. We're also going to talk about the Larry Williams smash day candle and how to use that as a scalping opportunity on the lower time frame. If you look at this gray shaded area here and here, these are two time periods I normally recommend traders not to trade. Why is that? Because normally you're going to be faced with consolidation or potentially a deep reversal. I do not suggest anybody to find setups in this time period here, which is the Asian session lunch, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. And also here at the London lunch, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. You're normally going to face either consolidation or a deep retracement that you can't handle. Consolidation tends to build sentiment, buy side and sell side orders. So the market is generating orders on both sides until one side finally spills over and then retail chases price. And then the commercials do something completely different. The market makers step in and fool everybody to the wrong side and they show you exactly where they want price to intend it to go. Now, when it comes to the London open model, I'm utilizing the previous session right before London open to find my liquidity pools. So let's break that down real quick. So if you go back here, and we're on a 15 minute time frame. Now within this period here, I'm looking for the highest high and lowest low or any swing highs or swing lows that haven't been broken. So we can see here within that time period, we have this high here, which is buy side liquidity. So we're just going to mark that off there. Then we also have this swing low here, which is sell side liquidity. This here is the opening price for the London session. So this is going to be a blending of an ideology here. So those that have been following me for a while now, they know that I like to utilize the opening price as my natural price indication to overbought and oversold. So whenever price is above 2 a.m.'s opening price, I'm in a premium. Whenever price is below 2 a.m.'s opening price, I'm in a discount. And I want to buy in a discount and I want to sell in a premium. Based on catalysts, I want to see something occur in the price action and see where I am based around the opening price. So we're just going to mark this off as well as the open. And we'll use a dash line to annotate that. And we'll just say 2 a.m. open. If we see price come down and take out this swing low, I would suspect price to want to purge and revert back to buy side. Now, many people may say, oh, how do you know it's going to do that? I don't know. But doing it long enough and having anecdotal data and back testing and seeing it happen time and time again, I have great reasonable doubt that it will do that, especially if it's falling into a discount. It's most likely ideal for me to buy down here and try to ride price back up to where liquidity is going to be residing, which is above that 15 minute swing high. Now inverse, if price were not to take out this swing low, or let's say it does take out the swing low and then goes up here, I can still find a potential sell opportunity up here because I'm selling above 2 a.m. and we're also taking out the liquidity that's above here. Now let's see what happens to price as we play this out. So if we go forward, we can see instantly that next 15 minute candle comes and purges that swing low. So the sell side liquidity taken out there. At this point, I'm going to probably look for an entry technique. And many people know that I'm going to use the one minute. I favor the one minute. And I'm looking for either the first, the very first fair value gap that forms, 
or the fair value gap that causes the market structure shift. So a fair value gap that runs to a swing high. So we can see the first fair value gap that we have after taking out that 15 minute swing low here is here. So that would be my point of entry. So I would look to go long here, have a stop loss of anywhere from 10 to 15 pips, and then have a TP of 10 to 15 pips. If in reasonable doubt that the 10 to 15 pips is in range of where that buy side liquidity is, then it's ideal to probably take the setup. The risk to reward ratio makes sense. I would look to go long here in that very first fair value gap, or I would wait for a fair value gap that runs through a swing high. And we can see here, if I play up the next candle, we have a fair value gap here as well, right here, here to here, and that dashed line, and we'll make it red. We'll change the color actually. Let me keep it black actually. We have a swing high here that's been broken. And what is that's the market structure shift that I'm looking for. So many people ask, why not go for this instead of this? Well, sometimes this could be you catching the tail at the tiger. The tail at the tiger. I said it so backwards. <laughs> you catching the, the tail of the tiger. Did I say that correct? I don't know. You're catching the tail of the tiger. Meaning the lowest point before or the last point before it actually takes off, right? That's where I'm trying to catch the long position here. Here, you can wait for price to return back down into it. And we'll see if it does. And we see we don't. So that could be a missed opportunity. Now, based on the one minute time frame. Now, does that mean on the two minute there couldn't be something there? There could be possibly. Three minute, yes, or the five minute. It could be the same idea, just on a larger scale and less data. Because the lower the time frame, the more candles you're going to see. And I'd rather see more candles because I have more things to work with. That's where I would go long. Price then is going to go back up to a premium and then potentially target what? That 15 minute swing high that was formed during that dead zone that we mentioned before the Asian session lunch. So you play it forward. Oh, we actually did get price to come back down into it. So we get price to get trade right back into it. Look at me not being patient. Price trades back down into it. And eventually we get back up there right into that 15 minute swing high. So that's a really good setup. Now, I clearly didn't know that that is how it happened because I don't trade the London session. I typically sleep in. I live in New York. So around this time, it's midnight. It's late. I'm going to be sleeping. I would wait for the New York session, which is more ideal for my lifestyle. So understand that don't force yourself to stay up and miss sleep, right? Depriving yourself of sleep because you want to make a couple pips or make a couple dollars. There's always opportunities for you to get a trade set up. Now, I'm not sure where you live in the world and where you're watching this right now, but try to pick a session that aligns with your work schedule or your life schedule or whatever regimen you have going for yourself. Make time for it. You might have to make some sacrifices. It is hard, especially being a trader, whether that is making sacrifices from, you know, your favorite TV show, video game, something you really indulge in, cutting back on hanging out a lot or going out to parties Whatever it is, you cut back on it so that you have time to actually utilize the session that you want to trade in. I don't utilize this, but I'm showing you because I know there's other people in the world where they wake up, they have time to trade this. I don't have time to trade this because I want to sleep. But this is your London session model. It is no different from what I showed for the New York model or the Asian session model. So I like to start it off with this because many people kept asking me, oh, do you have a London session model video? And I didn't make one because I thought it would be a little redundant to make another video that basically is the same thing. I could just speak about it here on the Forex Fridays and you guys are able to grasp that and then apply it to your chart and backtest and see if it works for you. Now, does it mean it's going to work every single day? No, but it is a model for you to use to be consistent. I tell traders all the time. One of my favorite models is it only takes one trading model to change your life. Only one to change your trading career, to start consistency, to start seeing progress. Does this trading model have to be 100% accurate? No, it does not. It just needs to be consistent enough that you understand it. That's the first and foremost thing, that you understand what is actually going on in the price action. When I explain it this way, I believe a lot of people understand it. 
I could teach this to someone's child. I could teach this in schools. I could teach this anywhere. And I think that the steps are very simple. Wait for the 15 minute swing low to be broken. Wait for the fair value gap that forms below 2 a.m.'s opening price because it's in a discount. So it's ideal to buy below this price. This price point is fair value. You're not paying a premium and you're not paying a discount. But as soon as price gets below this price point here, 1975.795. Once it gets below that, it's cheap and it's ideal to buy. But you don't just buy anywhere. You wait for certain things to align. That's my catalyst, the sweep of the sell side liquidity below the 15 minute swing low. Then the market makers give a fingerprint. See why my profile picture or my logo is a fingerprint because I'm looking for the small things. I'm looking for the crucial details. That's why I call myself Forensic Forex, where we analyze the specifics and details of the foreign exchange market. It's the little details people are overlooking. I'm showing you the details here. Price runs up and takes out that 15 minute swing high. Now, at this point, if you would have taken a long position, you would have granted yourself a great trading day. Now, let's say you missed this opportunity here and you saw a price here when you open your MT4, you open your chart, right? Whatever platform you're using. Could you now get into here and look for a sell opportunity? You can, unless the signs are being shown. You would wait for what? A fair value gap that gives a market structure shift to the downside or a fair value gap that forms generally overall. So we'll go forward. We'll see if we get any fair value gap. So we got a fair value gap right here. That's the very first fair value gap that forms after taking out that swing high on a 15 minute time frame. So that's the catalyst. The buy side liquidity has been taken. You have an opportunity potentially to go short. You have what? A liquidity void here. Price is running all the way up. You even have this swing low here and that swing low here to potentially be targets for sell side liquidity. Because if you're selling the market, you wanna be targeting sell side liquidity. And sell side liquidity normally resides below the swing points or the swing lows. That's a swing low. That's a swing low. You could look to go short here and we'll play it out. See what happens with the rest of London. You would draw some drawdown. We also have here, bring it back just a little bit. There goes another fair value gap with the market structure shift. This one here. So from here to here. And it's not complex things that I'm showing you guys. That's your market shift. I know you guys definitely seen this plenty of times. That's your market shift there. If I could get it to. And yeah, close enough. We'll zoom in. That's your market shift. You're in a premium as well. Look at where you are when this is all forming. To above 2 a.m. premium. Ideal sell scenario. Doesn't mean it's going to formulate. Possibly. It's not guaranteed, but it's a strategic risk. High probability risk taking here. And we try to sell into that area. And we can see price, you would endure some drawdown here. Now I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, how, what stop loss are you using? Oh, what TP are you using? You guys can Google that. And you guys can go on baby pips. They teach really easy, straightforward risk management techniques there. And that there you go. See how price eventually gets back down here? So these might have been too much for one trader, right? The drawdown here. Let's say you had a stop loss above the most recent swing high. Say this one. You would have been stopped. Hey, you take the L on that. And you got to move on. You're not always going to get it 100% right. You're going to get stopped. And the market might go back in the direction that you intended it to go to. You got to live with that. It's just the way trading works. But if you look at it, when the market did start breaking down, look at where it sold off from. So you got that very first fair value gap. You get no entry in it. Right? Nothing. You got another fair value gap from there to here. I'll delete the first one so you can see the second one. Look at how price trades back into it again. Drops down. You have another one here that you could have taken potentially. And you see how price continues to break down. So there is a fingerprint that appears in the market structure. Now, I'm only talking about the fair value gap. You could possibly be seeing the mitigation block. 
You could possibly be seeing the breaker. You could possibly be seeing the volume imbalance, the gap, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's whatever your eyes are familiar with seeing. I like to just stick with the fair value gap because it's the easiest thing for me to comprehend and see. Not to say that I can't sit here and analyze the other PD arrays. I just think this is the easiest one and straightforward one that is really simplistic for any trader to grasp at any level of trading. And you can see that fair value gap was the one that causes price to continue to tumble down, getting back down to swing lows or sell side liquidity. Now that's your London session model. Let's jump right into the New York session model. So the New York session model utilizes 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Now this is my ideal time to trade. I'm already up, I worked out, I'm about to make breakfast or I just finished eating and now I can sit down, mark up my chart, 5 to 7 a.m., we're not trading. We're just using it as a opportunity to further project what's going to happen in the future price action. So we'll play it out just to see what happens here, and we'll stop it here. We're on a 15-minute time frame. Many people ask me, oh, can she use the five-minute? You can, but I personally use the 15-minute time frame. You got to find what works best for you. I mark off the buy side liquidity that's above that swing high. So you got that. You mark off the sell side liquidity as well, which is below the swing low. And I started off with the London session one because many people kept asking me, like I said, I wanted to really get that out of the way so people wouldn't have to keep asking me, oh, do you have a video? Oh, when did you speak about it? I spoke about it in the first couple of minute, minutes of the video. I can't take that call right now. This swing high here, we can mark off, but it is broken already at seven. You can see how it comes up and breaks it at seven. So we'll still mark it off because it is a swing high. So we can say that is buy side liquidity. We also have this swing low here. And then we have the opening price for the session. So we have 7 a.m. right there. Same ideology. Overbought, oversold without any indicators. Leave the indicators alone. It is detrimental to a trader's development. You can't read the price action naturally as a raw chart. You're gonna fail. You can see here that 15 minute swing high was broken. We're going into New York now. What do we wait for? We wait for probably a fair value gap. So we'll just play it out. Do we get any? We got one here, right there. We got a small fair value gap here. That's a sell opportunity there. Fair value gap forms after the buy side is taking. It's not that I'm picking any random fair value gap. I'm waiting for it. Let's say a fair value got formed here below or before this was broken. Even though it's in a premium, it didn't give me the first step, break a 15 minute swing high. Press spikes back up into it. Runs up into the next level, the 15 minute swing high. So let's say you went short here, you will be in drawing some drawdown. It happens, like I said, you're not always going to get the best entry possible. Some days you will. Some days you will, and it's going to feel great. Some days you're not, and you're going to take some drawdown. But we want to minimize the drawdown as much as possible. That's why we follow these steps. Because it's more ideal to find the setup this way than just randomly picking a high and low and saying, oh, we're going to sell here, or we're going to buy at this zone, supply and demand. It doesn't work that way. Market doesn't care about supply and demand. It cares about specific price points specific price points it's not a random area above this high people draw this box and i'm like what box what about that zone it doesn't mean anything or a zone above this high they don't know how far it's most likely going to run up into it yeah we can do some you know testing of oh it probably runs up above it about an average of five to ten pips or 15 pips or five pick five pip increments we can say that you see another fear value gap here forms
it even has a market structure shift as well. So when it's live, this is all I'm doing. <laughs> this is all I'm doing. That's the market shift. That's swing low. It's been broken here. I would like to see price trade back into it and then sell off. Does it mean you're always going to get the entry? Sometimes you don't. And sometimes price actually gives this fingerprint, runs all the way from it, and then finally comes back into it later into the session and then gives you the setup. That's what happened here in the London one because I spoke too soon. I said, oh, it might it might have left us in the dust. But look, it came back down into it. You got your entry. Just got to be a little patient for it. You get into here, you're chasing price, right? You see the mark, You see the fair value gap form. And what, what, what do most people do? They say, ah, dang, I missed it. Let me get in long. Then they probably buy high or buy when price is already exploded to the upside and is in a premium again. So you're buying where? Expensive, not ideal. You buy cheap below the session's opening price. Here, vice versa, we're looking for the sell setup because the buy side's been taken. So we're looking for a sell setup. We play it out, see what happens. Play it all the way through. And you can see price continues to break all the way down. And do we have any other fair value gaps before, after the market shift? So that's the first one. Do you have a second one? We do have one here. And where is this fair value gap as well? Above 7 a.m.'s opening price. It's not interesting where they're printing the actual PD array or the fingerprint for you to use right there. Price is creating that fair value gap above 7 a.m. Price trades into it. Yes, you endure some drawdown. It's not always going to be perfect. And then what happens? Price finally falls through. Takes out what? Sell side. Sell side. Isn't that very interesting? How they're manipulating the price. Installing the price. And then all of a sudden the price is allowed to fly. As if they just press a button or flip a switch. And it said, okay, it's time to go. And it does it. And it just flies off. Now you can see here, it does take out these 15 minute swing lows. And we, it looks like there's no fair value gap that was to the upside. And that's when we saw gold completely melt. Right? We see gold go all the way down. Now, if you were thinking about getting a long setup here, you would follow the same steps, wait for the fair value gap, look to go long. Does it mean it's going to favor you? Not necessarily. Because at one point in time, the session itself is going to dictate one direction. It's not going to always run up here, then run back down here, then run back up here. Not all the time are you going to get days where the sessions do that. There are times where it does do that. You could look at many examples like that. But there are many more times where the price action is really distinctive in what it wants to do. Pull traders on the wrong side, get out of there. And then keep trending in one direction. It's not always going to be, oh, you find a buy set, sell setup. Okay, now we find a buy setup. Okay, now we find a buy setup. Now we find a sell setup. It's not going to be like that all the time. It's going to get to a higher time frame objective. Whatever on the daily chart or the weekly chart it's aiming for. Whether that's the previous daily low, the previous daily high, the previous weekly low, or the previous weekly high. It's going to target something throughout the week. It's not just going to range back and forth and you're going to find unlimited setups. That's not how it works. You're not going to find unlimited setups because it got back up here and it got down here and it got back up here. You're not going to find unlimited setups like that. It's going to be distinctive. It's going to say, we're out of here. We made our mark up here. We're dropping now and we're not coming back. And that's your New York open session. That straightforward. And we're going to take a look at some other examples. So my way in like back testing it, right? It's pretty simple. I use the sessions indicator. Now I have a video that already explains how to set it up. You just watch that video and you'll see how you can set that up. But on the 15 minute time frame, I leave the session indicators on like this. And I would go and look to see what is happening when price goes into the New York session or goes into the London session while using the lunch periods. That's what I'm doing. So let's, for example, let's take a look at this here. Just based off of hindsight, I could just see it what opens here, runs out that 15 minute swing high here. And then it runs back down to sell side. 
15 minute swing low here that's unbroken and then the lowest low of the session itself here and let's say we if we had to incorporate the swing low we would go here but it falls inside of london but this is the lowest low of the london lunch here so let's bring it back to how that started as well and we're going to mark off the opening price in a black dash line so we know that's the opening price This is how you backtest and study it. And I think it's the most efficient way to backtest it really quickly because you don't know what days it is. So when you put on the session indicators, you can see visually, oh, it did broke the 15 minute swing high, then went back down to sell side liquidity. So you go on the one minute and just a few how that went about. So it comes up and look at the first break real close. So here, price breaks there. Your first fair value gap that forms is right here. It's your very first fair value gap. That's where you're looking to go short. Yes, you've indrawed some drawdown here. But like I said, proper risk management, risk 1%. Stop loss, whether it is 5, 10, 15, 20 pips. Sometimes those tight SLs will get you from gaining profit you're going to cut your losses sooner but sometimes you're not allowing your trade to breathe you're going to find in your personal experience what that equilibrium is and how much you want to risk and how large you want your stop loss to be if it was something like gold i'm going anywhere from five to 15 pips anything else like you know eu gu nu i'll be more lenient i'll have 15 to 20 pips or 15 to 30 pips of an sl and I'm risking 1%. You can see that fair value gap here straight up into multiple times. And then finally what breaks down. But where's that fair value gap forming? Above 7 a.m.'s opening price. Right here's the end of the session right there. So you can see our price finally gets back to where? Sell side liquidity here. That 15 minute swing low. And down here, 15 minute swing low. How... Could that be random? It couldn't have been. And if you also look at this, look at the sensitivity of the opening price at 7 a.m. Look at how many times they sponsored sell opportunities. They run a high and then all of a sudden it goes down again. They run up, run a high, fails to break this high, runs back down. Fails to break this high, runs back down. But where is it all running from? Premium prices. <laughs> it's all running from premium territory above 7 a.m. This can't be random that they're selling in here. Now, that's the tricky part because many people say, oh, all right, I get the idea. I should be selling in there. I think a mosquito is in the room with me. Oh, man. Hope it's not biting me. But this here is where they're selling. But you can even see at times, even though the overall session was down, you can see in times where it brought itself below the opening price of set of the session 7 a.m. and found buying it found some quote unquote right i'm putting quotations around this it found some type of support and it was able to project itself higher but overall like i said normally the session is going to dictate towards one side towards the higher time frame trend what is the daily draw what is today's new daily candle going to be reaching for is it the previous daily high or the previous daily low? That's normally your easiest idea to follow. Are we targeting yesterday's high or yesterday's low? That's the easiest way I can explain it to any trader if they were asking about daily draw. And you can see here, the New York session once again follows suit here. Go back to the 15 minute time frame. Let's see if we can find a London session idea here. So like I said, turn on the sessions indicator. So I can quickly back test it. Here is a great example here. Here and here, that's midnight to 2 a.m. You find your highest highs or swing highs. 
Let's see which one's higher. This is your swing high here. I'll make this red. And then we also have, let's say, the highest high of the session right before it closed because 2 a.m. is still a part of the London, the Asian lunch here. And we can see that's rated and we can see it comes back down to sell side here at that swing low. See how quickly I'm easily putting this together and back testing it. Right. I'm making my studies more efficient. I'm not sitting here wasting time trying to guess. I have to mark up stuff. That's the only reason why I would use indicators, because it kind of saves you time. And hassle of I right, got to scroll back, check to make sure that's two and, 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 and midnight. Instead, I just set the session indicators to find those time periods for me so that my eyes can quickly look and study it as quick as possible. You can see we take buy side and take sell side. So let's just go back to it. Let's not forget to mark off the opening price. There you go. That's 2 a.m.'s opening price. 2 a.m. I really hope this mosquito is... I hope it's not a mosquito. I hope it's like some beetle or something. But that's 2 a.m. here. So the 15-minute candle would be this. That we marked off on the 15-minute time frame. So right there. So it's like 2... Yeah, that's the highest that 15-minute candle was. So from 2 a.m. all the way to 2.15... That's a 15 minute candle, so that's a high. So that's why it looks like nothing was there, but it's actually right here, right? 15 minute, just to double check, see right there, a candle. Is it that candle? It's 2 a.m. Oh, I mean, I mean, it's on the it's on the 15 minute candle though, but you can see how that's the high there. Oops. There we go. And ever since that candle is rated, right, let's say this high here is rated, and let's say even this high here is rated. When we look at it, where's the very first fair value gap that forms, guys? Right here. And look how we have little to no drawdown again. Little to no drawdown. Press straight up into it. You would go short here. Because many people ask, oh, where are you going short? I'm going short exactly where the end of that fair value gap is finished, which is the high of that third candle in the fair value gap. Because it takes three candles to make a fair value gap. This candle, the middle candle, and the next candle. There's the gap in price, and there you go. And then price continues to break down. And what would you target? Like I said, the sell side liquidity here. How did I know that price is most likely going to run down here? Because it's ideal that the market orders are residing below this low right there. And where does this all happen once again, fellas and, and, and ladies? Where does it happen? Right here. Here. Down. You guys seen that? It's not randomly selling up here. It's selling there with a purpose. It's selling there because it's too expensive. Right? I could sit here and say, ah, but the algorithm did this and the market makers did that. And then, um, you know, G30 and <laughs> all this other stuff people like to say. And I'm like, dog, it's just selling up here because it's above 2 a.m. <laughs> and it took out buy side liquidity. How simple and straightforward could that be? Instead of running these people around in the community, telling them all this nonsense. Oh, the news came out and... The Federal Reserve and Jermaine Powell and the ECB and the BOJ and the Bank of Canada, like all that stuff is irrelevant sometimes. The only things, like I say, that are really relevant is interest rates and yields. And that's all I would normally, for. NFP, unemployment data, those things are impactful in the market in my perspective. Anything else is all bluff, excuses, just to make all the retail traders go yapping about oh my gosh yo there's news tomorrow high impact medium impact yo it's fully packed tomorrow and what happens they trade and they lose all their money because they're literally psychologically getting you addicted to the news every week people keep checking um fx factory or whatever the news um channel that they use and they're like looking at it and scoping it out 
Yes, you should be scoping it out for the times that these are going to occur. And you need to be in the market before it occurs. Don't try to get into the market after the news drops because it's not ever going to work. You're going to get into the market. I think the fire department's alarm is going off. I'm, I apologize for that, guys, going off. But don't try to get into the market after the news has dropped or right when the news drops. Normally, it's going to be a equation for a disaster. You need to be in the move before it happens. How do you catch large days? How do you catch large runoffs? You're already in the market. You already got your trade set up. You're in. And then the market gives that volume an injection of orders and it flies. Then you make the profit. It's not when the market starts flying. Then you start clicking buy or sell. It's risky. In my opinion, a lot of people like to do it for NFP. I don't personally agree with twin trading. The idea of twin trading doesn't make any sense because they'll knock both your orders out. They'll knock out your buy position and you'll knock out they'll knock out your sell position. And there are many instances of that. And if P comes out, it drops down, right? And everybody in the is like, oh my gosh, it dropped down, I'm gonna sell. And they put a stop loss above a high. And then all of a sudden the market turns around really fast, knocks out their buy stop. Right, knocks them completely out there, hits their buy stop, hits their stop loss, and then all of a sudden, after hitting their stop loss, it goes back down short again. And then they try to go short, and then it runs back up again. So it's you got to really pay attention to what you're doing here, and what's really crucial to the marketplace. I think what I show on a day to day basis is really most of the building blocks to what trading is, the very basic building blocks. It's pretty straightforward. The idea makes sense. The logic makes sense. Doesn't matter if it's gold. Doesn't matter if it's wheat, if it's corn. The only thing that probably matters there when you go asset class to asset class is the time zones and the kill zones. That you have to do your due diligence for. I normally specialize in FX. I don't specialize in other things. So people may want me to look at the S&P. People want me to look at the S&P minis and this, and third. Doesn't mean you can't trade it. It's just that the sessions will be a little different. The kill zones will be a little different. So if you do your due diligence, and I know it's out there, people know what those time periods are for the S&P minis or the S&P. And this is just another great example of buy side, sell side, purge, revert. And that's your purge and revert. You're taking out the orders here and you're getting back down here. And you can see here how it takes out the sell side here, but doesn't give any buy opportunity to go back up. Normally, the session is going to pick a stance, like I said. It's not going to be wishy-washy, and you're always going to have unlimited opportunities back and forth. And even if it does something back and forth, an environment I wouldn't like to trade. And how would you know the market is most likely going to trade in that environment? Normally, the previous session, so for example, this is the New York session. The previous session here is the dead period. Look at how it's most likely consolidating and it's concise. It's not a session that is doing something like this, trending in one direction. When I see that, I normally have a gut feeling that the New York session is normally going to stall on me and not go anywhere because maybe the average daily range objective has been met by the algorithm. It's already set and it's probably going to reset itself and consolidate for a while until a couple of days later, it's ready to breathe. You have a couple of small range candles, then you start jumping into the large range cycle again. Now that's just another that's just another example here. We'll do one more. And then we'll get into the Asian session model. And then we'll talk about some entry techniques based on Larry Williams smash day candle. So 15 minute, turn on the session indicator and just scroll. Look about the other one. You scroll and you look. You see where there's fail. Yeah, there's going to be opportunities where it fails. There's no setup. You got to live with that. You can also be very specific. Let me add that in. You can be very specific when you want to use the model. Now, I say this all the time. When it comes to the week, your ideal trading days is most likely going to be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Some people disagree, and I disagree with Monday. And I, I, I see what they mean as well, because I typically don't like to trade Mondays the start of the, the week. You normally get all the retail traders all hype at the beginning of the week. Think about the excitement, right? The birth of a new week, the start of it. Super, there's a lot of excitement, gyration going on, and everybody's running towards it. 
and then they find out that it's not worth whatever the wow is towards spending their money on it, and they should have just saved their money. It's like a pump and dump. Same thing with like, you know, meme stocks and stuff like that. They get everybody to be super convinced that it's going to go to the moon. <laughs> you know, you had those, they coined those terms in 2022, 2023. It's going to go to the moon. AMC's that. GameStop is this. It's squeeze, short squeeze, short. And then no short squeeze happens because it's a money grab, folks. It's all hype. Let's see. An, let's see a London one. If you could back test one real quick. Nothing here. Fail setup. Right here. Also potentially fail setup because it draws too much, too high. But eventually, you can see how it gets back down to the south side. And look at how it's consolidating too. Look at how it's consolidating as well, guys. Right. Got to be really critical about what you're looking at here. Remember what I said earlier in the beginning of this video. The gray zones. You're most likely going to face two things. A deep retracement or consolidation. We're on a 50 minute time frame. You're looking at multiple days. You already see that in these gray, these gray zones, the market hardly moves. Think about it. So it has to be time sensitive because if we're highlighting a specific time in price and the same specific times in price are doing the same exact things typically every single day, isn't that something for you to pick up on and utilize? It is. See, this one is a great one too. Comes up, takes out buy side, the highest high of the session, and it finally drops down. That's a great, that's a great one too. Here, look at this. Let's, let's follow this one here because I believe this is a good example. Like I said, it's not like I'm cherry picking and I know what happened this day. <laughs> I don't. I'm just going here and just looking at it as if I was studying it together with you guys. We're doing it solo by myself when I first figured out the model. What's the lowest low that we have for the session here? We'll go with this, the 2 a.m. candle. What's the highest high we have or swing high? Yeah, we'll go with this. See how it takes out sell side, runs back to buy side purge the sell side revert back to the buy side you go back on lower time frame right when they purge that before we go down there we're also going to mark off the sessions opening price and i'm gonna keep talking about this guys because it's gold <laughs> it's gold man and i'm looking at gold versus us dollar but it's the information is gold to me I think nobody is sharing and utilizing it the way I'm showing it. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's anybody else there doing it, congrats. I'm glad that they are as well sharing it to the trading community. 2 a.m. opening price. Purge. One minute. Wait for fear value gap or market structure shift. Playing, playing, playing. No fear value gaps, right? Let me just double check because sometimes... I miss things. I'm only human. There we go. Your very first fair value gap is right there. We also have another fair value gap that creates a market shift. So just double check that that's high. 1922, 145. This low. 160. It's, is it just cutting it? I'll zoom in. No, it is. See, all you got to do is zoom in. I'm over here trying to squint my eyes at this screen. It's another reason why I don't like to trade all day. Health. Your eyesight is important. I'm not, I don't want to get older and have to start. Wear, I don't wear glasses. And I don't want to start wearing glasses. I want to reduce my screen time. Look at the market structure shift here as well. That's another possible opportunity to go long. There. Make these red. Like my fair value gaps, I buy fair value gaps to be red, and think about where we are towards the London session, two a.m. We're deep below two a.m. We zoom in. We'll see what happens. So you're looking for a long, let's say, you're waiting for this long opportunity here, or you go with this one here. 
and then you set up your stop loss. Now press play. I think I got the mosquito. Yep, it was a mosquito. Wow, it was actually a mosquito. <laughs> this mosquito was in here probably biting me. Summer here in New York, guys. In August, the mosquitoes, like, they're just breeding crazy outside. Nothing you can do about it, you know? Mother Nature. Without them, <laughs> we wouldn't be alive. But you see that? Look at how off of that fair value gap here and here. Right? And then people always ask me, why the first fair value gap, Deontay? Because, one, the first fair value gap might be the tail of the tiger. There you go. I caught it. Now I'm holding it. Look how quickly it runs up there. And that, look at the market structure shru going up. Look at the structure. Market structure. Another fair value gap. Right here. Look at how you can pyramid the trades. Another one. Fair value gap, market structure shift. There you go. There's another fair value gap here. There's no market structure shift here. But let's say you're the trader that wants the market structure shift. You feel more confident in that. Here goes this large fair value gap here to here. Breaks what? A swing. Who's higher? Let's see. You're higher. So this is a swing high here. Price trades back into that fair value gap. Continues to go higher as well. And it keeps going over and over and over again. Press play. Bingo. Where do we get? Back to buy side liquidity, folks. And I can't make this up. It's not like I'm manipulating the chart. I'm not out here to deceive you guys. I want you guys to win. I want all of us to win. I want I would I would love for the entire trading community, right? That statistic of 90% of traders that put down their first um, deposit into a live account or any investment, they lose it within six months. I would love for that to decrease. I would like to see 90% of traders that put down their deposit within the six months, they double it. They triple it. They quadruple it. I want to hear that statistic. I wish that was a thing. But unfortunately, as human beings, we're not designed that way. There's a lot of fallacies in the way we think, the way we react to things. Our emotions, greed, anger, lust, all those things impact you as a person and as a trader. Your personal characteristics, your personality can be a direct influence to your trading. Understand that. Your discipline, your consistency. Are you a person that is on top of your game? You wake up on time, you get to work on time. Or are you a person that is late to work? You're not on time. You're never... You know, you tell your friends you're going to meet them at 2, but instead, you're there late. You're there at 2.50, but the meeting started at 2. It's the same thing here. You're going to show up late to Asian session? Are you going to show up late to London session? Are you going to show up late to New York session? Are you going to keep causing things to keep you back from being profitable and consistent? It's not just the model, folks. It's not just the model. You got to put in the time. You gotta be consistent. You need to wake up. You need to set an alarm. You need to set alerts. You need to do whatever it takes for you to find this setup. This setup that I just told you. You need to be up and on time to catch this setup. Because if you're waking up at three, you might have missed it already. If you're waking up at four o'clock, you probably already missed it already. And granted, it is hindsight. We can see here by four, it's up here. But let's say you wake up and it's like 2.30. The setup could have already formed or already went to sell side, buy side, and left you in the dust. And you would have been sitting here trying to chase price. See how that's detrimental to you? It's very detrimental. Everything works in tandem. You can't just think, oh, I'm going to become a good trader, but I have a so-so, uh, monarchy. Uh, I have a so-so or average uh, personality. Or I'm I'm not um on top of my game. And the word I was wanting to use was uh what the name what's the word? Monarchy? I don't know. Somebody can correct me wrong. It's 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 cool. It's another word for feces or S H I T. I can't say it. But you don't want to fail on yourself. You want to push yourself. You want to be on top of your trading. You want to be in charge of your life. Don't just Dilly dally and just think, oh, I'm just gonna get in any time during London and trade. I'm gonna just get in any time of the day and trade. No, 
You can't. And I'm telling you now, the successful traders are waking up. The successful traders are not doing what you're doing. And I'm not sitting here saying it's specifically you. Or it's all solely your fault. But try to take some accountability. There you go. That's the London session model. <laughs> I hope nobody, somebody is going to ask me though, but that's the London session model, folks, right there, right there. And I haven't changed this model. Still stands. Fair value gap, where is it at? In a discount. They're buying down here, guys. They're buying below it, all down here. They're buying, 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 and then phew, profits made. Millions of dollars come in towards the central bankers or the large bankers. They make their money, they pack it up, and they move on. However, we don't do that. People tend to get in, get greedy, try to sell now. Oh, it got up here, now I'm going to look for a sell. Not ideal. So that's your London session model. Next topic, we're going to talk about the Asian session model. Not the model, but we're going to talk about, it's the same thing. We're going to talk about how to utilize the Asian session high and low when you are either bullish or bearish to the marketplace. So we're going to clear everything off the chart. Oops. Clear all this off the chart. And we're just going to look at the Asian session, right? Look at the high and look at the low. And let's look at this day, how it finishes today. Let's see. Okay, cool. Nice. So let's say we're done. Let's not even include London close. So let's just say we're just looking at these three sessions here. Asian, London, and New York. So what we have here is a classic ICT accumulation, manipulation, distribution, right? And eventually we've got a New York reversal because we saw it going down. But if we look at the Asian session high and low, we can see there is some utilization here. And with limit or stop orders, so we have the Asian session high. And then we have the Asian session low. Now, if you are a buyer, your ideal opportunity for you to buy is waiting for price to come down and then you buy there and you wait for price to go up. That was what that would be your personal opportunity. If you are a seller, based on your high time from analysis, int intraday analysis, you think that it's going to go down, the daily draw is going to go to the previous daily low, you would ideally want to see price go up to the Asian session high, then you sell. That's what you would do. But let's say by the time you wake up, you see price and you're a buyer and you suspect it to go higher, you saw price do this, come down and get back up here and you already missed the ideal so, I mean, ideal buy scenario, right? Taking out the sell side, purging it, and then probably reverting back to the buy side. What could you do here at this point? You could still utilize the Asian session high. You could use a buy stop order. When price gets back up here, you're buying on strength now. Use the buy stop order. And where would you put your stop loss? Either below what the low was formed in London, or you put your low back at the Asian session low here. I would say ideally you want to put your low, your stop loss back where the London made the low or the turning point after taking out the sell side here, because there are going to be times where price does return back to the Asian session low like this, but doesn't get back down to the London low. Then you still have room to have a higher run in price action. So you can endure some more drawdown. Remember risk one to 2% per trade. But that's how I would use the Asian session high if I was looking to go long. So if we play it out. Boom, we missed this opportunity, right? They got everybody on the wrong side, then they started pushing price higher. But you knew that you should have been buying down here, but you're late. You woke up late, let's say. Let's say we're using excuses this time. You woke up late or you overslept, you know, you have children, you might be a little tired, and it's not an excuse. That's if you're taking your care of your kids, you take care of your kids. Family comes first. You were tired, you couldn't get that. But you could what you could do quickly is, oh, it took out the Asian session low, it's already coming back in here. Let me just place a buy stop order at the high here and buy on strength and then hold boom now you're in the market long as soon as it triggers you in long you hold and you're holding for what higher price action maybe a swing high formation here or swing high up here or here something reasonable 10 15 pips 
and you hold. And you can see what happens. Price does run you back up, right? Into profit. Little to no drawdown here. Buying here with that stop order. Now, at times, like I said, you could be buying at here and you get into this period and you get a deep retracement. And then it comes back up. But here you can see another day it's showing you consolidation in that area, consolidation in that area. Cannot be random, folks. It just cannot be. Let's take another day, for example. We're just going to keep going back. Oops. Always doing this. Perfect example. Another example. Asian session consolidation. Look how we get the little consolidation. Did a deep pull down back at going to 2 a.m. Look at how it takes out the Asian session low. What's still what's still here? The Asian session high. The Asian session high. Oh, we got actually, oh, see, I make mistakes too. So it already takes out the Asian session high here. Now let's say you were going short or you wanted an opportunity to go short. Well, what could you do? You put a sell stop order at the Asian session low. It triggers your selling on weakness. So when it gets to the Asian session low, you go short. And then once again, I made another mistake because I, I, I didn't see this here. But we can see how it takes out the Asian session low here and gets back up here. But over and all in all, if you're going to utilize it to go in one direction and you're sure that you have aligned yourself with the higher time frame premise and direction and intraday direction as well. You use the limit and stop orders around the Asian session high and low. That's how you utilize that. Here you see how we don't get back to the Asian session high here. Right? It takes out the low. This Asian session high, I mentioned this in the channel before, how price will leave one side of the Asian session still open. But in the near future, it will get back to it. Look at all that buy side that's left above it. So that's one full day that it leaves it open, doesn't never gets back to it. But the next next two days, look what happens. It gets back to it. The agent says not. That could be an opportunity for you to catch a quick run up. Because if it's buy stop order, it's going to eat and dig into any order that's above that high. And you can see how it hits it, quick re rejection, but then it runs back up into it. Maybe runs over it by a couple pips. So from here, take up. From here to here. And eventually you can see it breaks back down. But I'm trying to show you easy methods to get into the marketplace. You don't have to overthink or try to catch the entire run. You don't have to catch all 200 pips. If you could catch 10, 15 pips every day, I think you'll have a successful trading career. You don't have to catch 200 pips every day. You don't have to catch 20 pips every day. It could only be 10. 10 minimum. Every day. It doesn't sound like a lot. Yeah, you could do more, of course. I can catch more than 10 pips. I know you could. But what about the days when you don't catch more than 10 pips and you catch more than 50, 100 pips in drawdown? Those are the bad days. Those are the bad days. Look at this. Look at how, like I said, the Asian session. Something about the, in my personal experience, I think the Asian session has a lot to do with the intraday setup. Or if there's true day range, look at how the low is taken. And then we get back to the Asian session high is left unopened. Look at how we get right back to the Asian session high and it runs right through it. Couldn't we, obviously it's hindsight, couldn't we have placed a buy stop order here and brought right here at this point and held that to make profit? Yeah, we could have. We could see it did run. It runs even higher. We could do that. Same thing here. Look at how the low is taken. But then going into London, it gets to the high again. Buy stop. Buy on strength. Yeah. So here, it's more of a kind of retail-based logic, you know. You're buying on, quote-unquote, the breakout. But that's how you utilize it. Because we know the low has been taken. And we have a potential open flow of orders here. So if it gets back here, we could potentially see a 10, 15, or, you know, couple pip run. 10 pip run above the high. And you could take that. Look at here again. Look at the Asian session low that was left open. Think about it, guys. Look at this low that's been left open. It eventually gets back down to it. You sell here. You endorse some drawdown, for sure. 
but look at how it eventually you get it back into profit. Same thing again, once again, Asian session high taken. Oops, it's up here. Asian session high taken here. And what happens? Price gets back to the Asian session low. You sell there on weakness with a sell stop. Triggers you into the market on the sell stop. There you go. Runs off. Couple profits. Doesn't have to be complex. Doesn't have to be at all. Not at all. Now, it doesn't matter what pair you're looking at. Because most likely, the Asian session will give you some type of consolidation. There are times where it does trend up really fast. See, most of the times you got consolidation. And if we continue to turn on the other sessions, consolidation, 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 consolidation. You got two sessions almost back to back with consolidation. And that's how I would utilize the Asian session high or low when buying or selling. Now, if that was a little confusing, definitely ask me questions. I could answer those questions later on, but that's how I would use it. So now we're going to move on to another topic. I'm just going to take a sip of water. Now, the Larry Williams smash day theory is... If you get a candle that purges one side of liquidity and it's at a very extreme, so all time high or something, or the intraday high, or last hour high, last four hour high, and the candle closes above or below several highs or several lows, wait for price to get back to that low, that candle that closes above or below the highs or lows and sell there with a limit or a stop so for instance this right here this candle is a larry williams bring it back this candle here in itself is a larry williams smash day candle why does this being classified for larry williams smash day candle because and this is based off the 15 minute time frame so just know price is fractal no i'm talking about a lot of ideas i might be talking a little fast because i'm excited and i really want to teach you guys and explain these things to you this close of this candle, think about it. This close of this candle, we'll bring it all the way as far as we can get it. The close of this candle is above multiple highs here. To the average person looking at this chart, when they see that, psychologically, their brain tells them, right? If I had to ask them a question and I showed them this chart like this. Without any context moving forward. And I showed them a chart just like this. A screenshot like this. And I asked them, hey, is gold bullish or bearish? Most people instantly is going to tell me bullish. Hands down, you cannot disagree with me on that. Most people, an average person you walk around, the average trader will see this chart. See that 15-minute candle and say that is bullish. It looks bullish. So if you looked through Larry Williams' book and you've read it. Yeah, that phrase, it looks bullish. It looks bearish. This looks bullish for sure. The fact that it looks bullish already tells me I need to relax because they are pulling retail traders into the market. Now, if price gets back down, this is what Larry Williams was saying. If price gets back down to that candles low here, you sell. You sell. And it will look something along the lines like this here. On a sell stop, stop loss either above the candle itself or a couple pips above that candle's high. I preferably would say above the candle's high because at times you'll see the next candle may open and go up here and then go short. But that might psych a lot of traders out. But the fact that this candle is closing above all these highs, you're only going short once it gets down here. The next candle can open and go up here. Don't worry about it. And it may not even have, it may be a close that's higher than this one, right? The next candle may open, come up and close even higher than that one. So then instead of using this candle's low as the short opportunity, you use the next candle, this candle, 
as a short opportunity. The next smash day candle as a short opportunity. If price now gets down here, you go short. Now, if it's not ideal because of the risk parameters and how far price is from your, your SL and your entry because of how large the candle is, don't take it. But just follow the analogy that I'm trying to show here. It's on a 15-minute time frame. It's so fractal. And we'll show it on the higher time frame as well. And you see how powerful this idea is and how you catch turning points and how you catch how the market catches traders off guard at times because they see this and everybody probably goes what long they're buying here buy 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 eventually it may not keep running up like that it may get exhausted and come back down and what happens we play price look at how price quickly with the quickness man it even opens the next candle opens it doesn't even run that candle's high, right? Opens and just goes short. Because people say, oh, but what about the next following candles? What if it opens and goes up here? It's when the candle, when, when price gets back down to this closed candle's low. And like I said, if this candle instead opened and went up and closed above it, then we'll use that new candle's low as the higher opportunity for us to go short instead of this candle's low to go short. And we can see here, boom, you go short there on a sell stop on weakness so the market's coming down and you're selling on weakness when the market's going up and you sell you're selling on strength and vice versa when buying and we'll show both examples price comes down breaks down you go short here see that that's your larry williams smash day scalp opportunity if price doesn't get back down to this candle's low, you don't go short. Because many people ask you that. What if it doesn't get down there? You don't do anything. You don't. You sit on your hands and you wait. You don't do anything. Look at this one here. Look at how this candle closes above several highs. This candle here, several highs. Look at how it gets back down to that candle's low here. small opportunity of shorts here so you probably got stopped let's look at this on any other time frame so let's clear this all off look at it from the daily time frame now i can see here there was multiple opportunities some opportunities were failed opportunities because like i said every model is not going to be perfect but let's just look at an opportunity that was really ideal and made sense. So let's come here. Looking at this candle, we can see its close is above. It's texting me. Okay, cool. Its close is above the last, let's say, three to eight days. highs in retail traders minds what do they think about this when you show them the chart ah it's bullish it looks bullish but in fact that look it looks bullish is actually probably the turning point and you'll see we pray price forward. Larry wants to say you go short here on the sell stop. Use a sell stop. Sell stop order. There you go. Look how quick you get into profit. Sell stop order. Mm, short. Now, could this continue to trend for a couple days? Yes, because it could be a turning point here at this time. And you play it forward, you see you had a couple days of profit. Price continues to go down from where you sold from here continues to go lower eventually we could see it fails and gets back up here but let's say you were able to capture something here as well some profit here the same thing happens again here it's the most recent high that we had in gold till we started seeing it trickle down 
another candle doing the same thing. Look at where it's close is. Close is above last three to eight days highs. Now the three to eight days is, and, I, and don't quote me on this, read the book, do your due diligence. I know in the book, at some point he said that it had to, I think it was a minimum of three or a minimum of five. And I personally would say three to eight, right? I'm giving myself a range. I'm just gonna take a sip of water. Three to eight days. That high there. So if price gets here, we know that it looks bullish, but we could sell here on a stock. Sell stock order. Or is like I said, selling on weakness. Selling on weakness here. Price gets down there. What do you do? You look to go short. Like I said, you're going to have a stop loss. Now, most likely, like I said, I would say place your stop loss at that smash day candles high or a little bit above it. And look at what happens to the market. Now, just from that, play it all the way through to where we are now. Just from that idea... You see how rewarding that is? How you could catch the turning point? I'm showing you how to catch the turning point. That's how you catch it with a sell stop order. Now, I could show another idea, right, to catch this, but this is how you catch it sooner than later. This is how you're closer to the truth than other traders. You're light years ahead of retail traders. Based on what Larry Williams has taught, I realize it catches you at a moment where everybody is off guard. Everybody thinks it's going to go up. Next daily candle is going to go up. But once it fails and breaks that low, you may be at that turning point there. It's probably creating what? A swing high. <laughs> right? It's creating a swing point, folks. The market makers are creating a swing point. And that's what happened there. Creates the swing point and price never gets back to this long-term swing point. They don't want to run the stop there because they're probably heavily short and up closes. And they've taken profit from their buys. And they're looking to go short. Same thing can be said vice versa for a buy setup. Now that you have this idea in mind, let's just look at an idea and a sell setup. So let's just change the pair. All right? Let's change the pair. Let's get into this look right down here right now I know I'm the hindsight but look at where the turning point occurred and look at how Larry Williams idea of catching the turning point makes sense let's come in. you can see price all made this high all the way up here July 14th right or is it which one's higher right here July 14th I believe is higher yeah, July 14th. This is where that turning point occurred. But how did you catch this turning point? Okay, let's let's take a look. This candle's date, this is a daily time frame. This candle's close is lower. Close is lower than three to eight days lows. What does Larry Williams say? It looks bearish. Retail traders see this, most likely it's bearish, but then people are caught off guard. That's the whole thing. That's when it stops and the market order and things start to trigger. People are caught off guard because the next day, look what happens, it runs up there. Yeah, it does come back off. Doesn't close above the candles high because many people ask you that. Ah, oh, but it wicked above it, but it closed below it. Doesn't mean anything. Once it crosses the plane of line, you're in. You're in here with a buy stop. You're buying on strength. 
because it's going up you're buying look at that just by buying there potential opportunity now you can even see here that this was also a smash day candle ideally because look at the close it's above several highs and then price finally gets down to that low there could have been a scalp opportunity may you hold that for two three days four days a week whatever it is but you can see how this was where you catch that turning point because it looks bearish And in his book, he was stating that if you wanted a really good smash day, it has to be when price actually is at extremes or has taking out sell side or buy side liquidity. And we can see here, price has definitely taken out sell side. Look at the swing low here, that swing low here, this swing low here, that swing low here. So it's definitely taken out those phantom trend line, right? Those trend line traders. Right, trading over the trend line, you've already done it. And you can see how it's looking to gear itself to go back up and you catch that turning point going back up. So you play it out in price. Ever since that looks bearish opportunity, people were probably heavily short. Retail traders are short, commercials are net long. And they're buying in all these down close days. Down day, down day, look what happens after. Price just takes off. Now, if you take this concept and bring it to the lower time frame, you'll see that you can catch opportunities or turning points sooner than later. Let's take a look at those examples we were looking at for gold. So we're going to 15 and we'll just look at the most recent session that we had. So we don't have any candles here on the 15 minute that close. Oh yeah, we do. So right here, look at that 15 minute candle. Boom, that candle closes above several highs. It also took out buy side, right? Again, this was the candle that take out the Asian session high, but this candle takes out the high of the day. So this could be a significant price point. It's closing or it looks bullish. But then when we play it out, we can see it comes back down to that candle's low. That's where you go short. That's the short opportunity. Now, I don't know how hold you how long you would hold it for. I definitely would hold it for a substantial amount of pips. But we can see, let me draw this all the way out. close of a candle make sure I'm just marking it right marking it out right for you guys 15 was it on the 15 years on the 15 minute but I want to know what day it was apologize the time it was 715 candle okay Thirty. Where's thirty at? Right there. So price, right there. Price then comes back all the way down to what? That low. You have to go short. Draw down for sure. It's gold. Like I said, everybody wants to trade gold. I don't understand why. Draw down. You see how it gets back down below that low, that line. Very small opportunity there via 15 minute time frame. But if you still take the analogy of it here on the one minute, you can see how it still follows suit. Find a candle that closes below several lows, takes out sell side liquidity, wait for the candle to get back to the candle's high, you buy there. See that candle? It closes above all these lows while taking out these equal lows here. And it's not the candle, it doesn't have to be the, the candle that takes out the lows, but you can notice that the catalyst is that south side is taken right here, right here with this candle. And this could have been the smash day candle, but the next candle opens up and runs right through it. And this one actually closes, has a close 
that's below this low. So we're going to use this as a new smash day. Wait for price to get back up here above that. And then you buy. You see how it trends up. That's how I would do that. For a scalping opportunity. Like I said, it doesn't have to be for hundreds of pips. It could be just something real quick and nifty. Because everybody was a scalper. Everybody talks about, oh, the prop firms are only for scalper. I had someone tell me that. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Prop firms are not just for scalpers. I mean, unless that's how you want to roll. But... I think you could definitely utilize different trading models and just scalping, but this is for those that want to scalp. You want to utilize the close of the candle and knowing that it's at an extreme high or extreme low, and then you utilize the limit order or the stop orders. The stop orders essentially stop buy stops and sell stops. See this on the five minute? Look at that. Now it closes above all these candles highs. This one candle here. And it finally gets back to that candle's low. And then ever since then, it just drops. Plummets. It plummets off. That's how I would use the Larry Williams Smash Day candle on the lower time frame. For my intraday setups or for a scalp opportunity. Some people see the screenshots that I take and they're like, how did you get that entry? It's because I'm using that idea. And that's why. So as we're bringing this towards an end, I'm going to talk about gold because I haven't done a daily update in a while. I've been trying to rest. been making profit throughout the month to close out my gold longs. And I'm just trying to relax. I got one more month of summer. And good weather here in New York. So I'm trying to take it up all in. The last daily update video, I said that I was expecting gold to probably get back down to 1920. And that was when we were around, I think, like here. And then instead, it gave us two updates, which is cool, which is fine. But I can see now there's a lower swing high being priced in here after taking out buy side or clean highs. I was really suspecting price to get back into this fair value gap here, but it didn't do it. Hey, you're not always going to get it right here. You could go on a winning streak for weeks and weeks and weeks. You're going to take an L eventually. You're going to get the bias wrong. Happens. I'm not the best at it, but I'm trying. Price comes back into 1980 once again, and it goes back down to 1950. I think gold is probably going to reach back down to 1920. That could be next month. That could be next week. Oh, next month. Next week is technically next month. But that could be next week or next month. And we see gold get back down to 1920 because we what recently did what? Break a swing low. So if a swing low is broken, I want to see a lower swing high formation for it. But the fact that I already got the signs that we have a lower swing high, suggesting that probably gold is going to run lower, take out this swing low here. DXY on the flip side, we recently took out a swing high here, one, two, three. And in that process of taking out a swing high, we also have a higher swing low, one, two, three. That's that higher swing low, that's that swing high. I've been adamant about dollar making a pullback. I didn't know when it was going to occur, but I knew it was going to happen eventually, and it did, filling in this liquidity void. So we had two down days, and look at how they're buying back. And I know it's dynamic because this one candle in itself is larger than the last two that it formed. And it's trying to quickly get away from it, right? As if it had the cooties. Like if you were little kids again, oh, don't touch it, you have the cooties. This is what's happening. The green candle thinks the black candles have the cooties and it's trying to get away from it. And they uptrend at least. And the downtrend would be the inverse. It would be the, the black candles thinking that the green candles have the cooties and it wants to run away and down away from green candles here the green candle wants to run up and away from the black candles that's how i'm looking at it and speculating it higher swing low formation one two three that swing low here is higher than this one that could be insight that the market makers are buying dollar back up now seasonally going into next month
August is bullish. Do I solely take the word on the seasonal chart that it's going to be bullish? No, I need the price action to align with that. Now, someone had asked me earlier, what happens? At, how do you trade the first week of the month? The first week is the NFP week normally, right? If they haven't changed it to the following week, depending on how it works with the holidays. That first week, I'm not really utilizing myself trying to trade. But what I'm doing is I'm waiting to see how price gears itself around the opening price to the monthly chart. How is it setting itself going into the first week around the monthly chart? Is it inducing traders to go to the wrong side? Is it producing a Judas swing to lower traders up or down? If they're lowering the traders up and the market makers are intended direction to sell, those traders are going to really be very optimistic because they see the price action going up until one day, like I said, you get a Larry Williams smash day candle and then price just completely melts through the low and just keeps dropping because it looked bullish, but it was actually going to sell off. I would like to also look at other pairs. I can't just look at just dollar. I have to look at things that are either inversely correlated. So let's see what British pound, right, is doing. during that month August it's down so I have a strong possibility that dollar is going to gain strength and British pound is going to gain uh, and, and lose strength if we look at it let's just look at GU real quick if you look at GU we can see that we've made a high point in July if you've been tricking down from it July yeah so going into August, so far it's following it. Not every time is the seasonal chart going to be followed step by step. Sometimes it's going to go against it. And when it goes against it, I feel like you have even better opportunities to know that it's not following the seasonal tendencies and it's most likely going to go opposite to what it's doing because it's not following the code that you expect it to do. So that means you need to take advantage of that. When you see the seasonal charts are failing, you need to already say, hey, I'm going to go towards the other way. It's actually not selling. It's actually buying. So start buying. Find new buying opportunities on the daily chart or the weekly chart or even intraday. Find a new opportunity to go long. So this is good as well. The fact that I see it's inverse to dollar. And if we check, let's just set gold. So gold, it's going up. I don't prefer that because they're both going up. So I would personally not look to trade gold next month. You see how easy I make that decision? The fact that the seasonal charts have been indicating for next month, at least for August, that gold and dollar are going to be going up in the same direction. I should not be looking to trade gold. Leave gold alone. That is one premise that I use to say, eh, eh, eh. Leave it alone. Look at another currency pair. And I personally think that either I think it's E or AU. I'm going to send the poll out when I do my evaluation on what currency pairs I think we should vote for or trade. That's ideal to trade going into next month. We'll see about that. But gold wouldn't meet the chart because it's following the same tendency as dollar going up in August. I don't want that. So let's leave gold alone. If I had to look at another foreign Currency pair, let's say mm, Euro dollar. August down. So Euro would be another pair I would probably most likely want to trade. And then I'll take it a step further. I'll go on the monthly chart and see what did July do? Is July's monthly candle large or small? If it's large, then I think I would probably cut it out the equation. Now, if it's small, I'm most likely going to add it into the equation because if the previous daily, the previous daily, the previous month is small, that means the market's in a small cycle. That means sooner or later in the near future, whether it doesn't matter what time frame, price is going to kick back into a large range cycle. Whether that's daily, five minute, one minute, 15 minute, the price action will kick back into a large range cycle. And I prefer to have a sm small previous month. Because the new month coming in is most likely going to be filled with incitement and gyration, and it's going to fly and take off. 
it may leave a lot of people in the dust and give nobody an opportunity to buy cheap or sell high. So this is already a good sign. And we can see GU already been has been breaking down as well. So the lower swing high. So we have a, a lower a swing high here, a lower swing high here, a lower swing high here. So we keep breaking down, and we just broke a swing low with a swing high pattern as well. So if we continue to buy, we may be at fault for not following the macros and the seasonal tendencies. The price action is what really dictates whether or not I'm buying or selling. And I believe going into next month on August 1st, I would like to see probably British pound come a little lower. And just looking at the IPTA for today or for July, you can see how price is using these sensitive price points to rally itself. That's the 40 day and 60 day high, relatively equal highs. You get how price threads it and it finally gets away from it. That's pretty cool. DXY, DXY, gold, up day. What happens if you're in a downtrend, you get an update, you sell. So I would be looking potentially either going into next week during London and New York to sell or even Asian session to sell. That's what I would do. Look to sell after up close candle in a downtrend. You want to say, ew, up close candle, don't touch me. I'm going to go pick something else. And that's what I would do here. Sell. At the open and the close. Sell on a sell stop and sell on a limit order. So price running up to a certain price, limit order is triggered. And then price coming down to sell stop, sell stop order is triggered. And we pick. So that's what I'm normally doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can see how this swing low is broken and that swing low is broken. And we got lower swing high. So gold, like I said, could be making the trip right back down to 1920. That's what I see happening here. If you look at the dollar, still trading back up. We just got back what? To that 20 day look back low. And look at how we got a reaction off of it. Look at how price hits it perfectly and then price sells off. Yeah. That's how I'd be utilizing a lot of things at one time. Hopefully, this was insightful. I think I'm going to call it a day tonight. Enjoy the weekend, guys. Much love and support to you and your loved ones. Appreciate anybody that's supporting me, pushing the channel forward. Trust and believe I try to get back to every single YouTube comment, every single DM, every single message, email. I'm there. I get hundreds of them sometimes in one shot. And I can only have the capacity to answer like three. So all in all, peace.